got guests. Careful. By the crane, villains ready your arms! Geralt of Rivia. He's back. It's been a year since The Witcher 3 was released and we took on the Wild Hunt. Well, now developer CD Project Red are ready to say goodbye to old mate Geralt with one final adventure, Blood and Wine. This is no ordinary DLC. Blood and Wine is huge. With a whole new area of the map to explore, a new main storyline and heaps of secondary quests and Witcher contracts to complete, there's weeks of witchering in this. Yeah, this is seriously generous. The devs has said that this is it for the trilogy, so you can tell they wanted to go out on a high note. The story kicks off with Geralt responding to a call for help. To hunt a mysterious beast, of course. Got it. For an aristocrat dies. At best, it's a scandal. At worst, a diplomatic incident. And before you know it, you're in an all-new region called Toussaint. This is a picturesque and wealthy realm known for its fine wines, charming royalty, and, you know, monsters. <laughs> ah, I'd almost forgotten how good the combat and creatures are in this game, Hex. And you're thrown right into it with this DLC, facing off against a rather irritated giant. The fights always have such a good flow. Switching between sword moves and using your signs is a delightful dance with death. <laughs> It took me a while to get to grips with it all again. Yeah, and you need to be in top form because everything in Toussaint is really high level. There are savage centipedes, fire-breathing slithers, and as Geralt discovers on his quest, higher vampires. We don't have to fight. You are wrong. He seriously got his work cut out for him on this quest and I was instantly pulled into the story. The new characters are great. The fearless Duchess, Anna Henrietta. Your Highness, I... Mind it doesn't get wrinkled. <laughs> and the mysterious death laugh. If I understand you correctly, you would rather help a monster than kill it. I mean, they're all really interesting, and you can tell there's so much going on that you'll need to uncover. Yeah, this isn't just a beast hunt. It's more of a grand murder mystery, and I love playing detective. They make it so much fun. Geralt's always needing to search for clues or do some kind of tracking. Footprints made by soiled boots. And I love those bits where he examines a corpse. Something in the throat. Elf guardian Florins from several different provinces. If the murderer did this, means we're dealing with a sentient thinking beast. Yeah, it's like CSI Witcher style. Yeah, he's just so knowledgeable. I'm also glad that you can turn off that fisheye effect when you use his Witcher sense now, because that had always bugged me. They've made so many improvements with the massive patch that came with this DLC. Oh, the whole UI is so much better now, especially those customised map markers. Plus, now you can dye your armour. It's fun trying out fancy new colours, although I wish they were a bit more outlandish. They're a bit muted. I mean, there are amazing costumes all over Toussaint, though. Colourful armour, fancy frocks. I recall her always being rather possessive. Lots of peacock feathers everywhere. You know, The Witcher has never been afraid of offsetting all of the monster slaying with a bit of fabulous, and I love that. And there's just so much detail in everything. The castle's hex. Oh, don't even get me started, Bajo. Beauclair is a beautiful capital. In fact, everything in this new region is so magical, I just took screenshot after screenshot. Screenshot. I think the game actually runs smoother and looks better on the console versions now too. Although the loading did feel a little bit longer to me, so maybe there's a small price to pay there. You can also own your own home in this DLC. Yes, Corvo Bianco. Geralt's very own estate, complete with vineyard that you can decorate and upgrade. Somewhere to hang all your spare armor sets and knickknacks. You even get a servant, Barnabas Basil Faulty. Basil? Basil! Another new feature in Blood and Wine is the addition of mutations. You'll need to complete a quest to unlock this ability set, but it essentially adds a new tree of perks to further flesh out what you're already capable of. And I like it because it adds another layer to what was already a pretty deep system. Yeah, I like that mutations unlock extra ability slots too. It's all geared towards making Geralt even more powerful than he was before, which you really need in Blood and Wine because, like we said, Toussaint is a highly dangerous place. 
If you love a hand or two of Gwent, there's a new Skalga deck, which has some powerful new minions and Kraken Crate as the leader card. But you will need to hunt around to find all the best cards. Yeah, I like that they made a whole quest line out of building your deck. In fact, there are a number of quests in this game that have multiple parts, and I just love that. One has you helping a massive building project erect a giant wonder, and then there's that hermit who tasks you with passing five tests of virtue in order to claim a sword. By one who possesses the five chivalric virtues. Folk call me a lot of things, but virtuous? I don't know. I just... I can't see myself putting this down until I finished all of it. All of it, Bajo. Yeah, they don't do anything by halves, do they, CD Projekt Red? And I love that they just put as much care into their side quests as they do the main story. I know, it just makes the whole world so rich and rewarding to explore. It's so impressive. And if you like getting sidetracked like I do, then be prepared to be kept very, very busy. With dressings, bandages. What's that about? I find it so hard to go past one of those question marks on the map without finding out what it is, and it's usually something I have to run away from. Damn it. Blood! Blood! But I will clear them all. Yes. Now, obviously, I'm already a big fan of this franchise, but what this DLC does is just reconfirm what an incredible game The Witcher 3 is at its core. I mean, what else is there to say other than this is the perfect add-on to the perfect game? I'm super sad this trilogy is coming to an end. I'm giving this five out of five. Yeah, it's so rare to be this excited about a DLC, and it's rare to find DLC that gives so much. So I'm giving Blood & Wine five out of five as well. Still kind of strange. You cross the ocean when I call sometimes, but then get hung up on the tiniest fence. What's that about? Uh, what can I say? Everyone's got limits. <laughs>